Hello viewer, welcome to today's lesson. In our today's lesson, we are looking on auditing and assurance. The topic is audit evidence. Having cleared the previous topics, today we look on the stage called audit evidence. I still believe you remember the topics that we have covered relates to a particular stage in auditing. By stage, I mean whenever you are doing auditing, there are four main stages. Stage number one in auditing is referred to as well. I hope you can remember, we call it planning. Stage one. Stage two is called what? It's called gathering evidence. This is the stage that you are supposed to be looking at because that is where we are for today. Then we'll be looking on uh, another stage called overall review, but this one will come later. Overall review is another stage. And we have stage number four. Hope you remember the last stage in auditing is called what? Report, reporting. So the stage that we are working today is this one. And we're introducing a small topic called audit evidence. This topic here will also cover other areas of audit evidence because it's a stage on its own. In this stage, there is the theory part of the evidence, the theoretical part of the evidence. And then there is what we refer to as the sampling, the techniques of gathering evidence. We also have using the work of an expert or collecting evidence by using an expert. So I'll also bring it here, experts, knowledge. And we can also talk about collecting evidence on specific area, specific areas. The specific areas that we are going to be looking at will be, for example, collecting evidence on incomes, collecting evidence on expenses, collecting evidence on assets and liabilities. Assets and liabilities. What you ordinarily refer to as what? This one is ordinarily referred to as a uh, practical audit, this last part here. For me, the lesson for today will be covering the theory part of the audit evidence. So I welcome you and prepare. If you have a book, put it so that we can collect some few notes concerning it. I'll put it aside and we can collect some few things relating to this. So this topic, what you need to know before you do any exam in auditing and assurance is one, the definition of the term audit evidence. So we are going to do the definition of audit evidence. Once we clear the definition, we can introduce something else called the assertions. Assertions. This is the area to watch. Having covered assertions, we can look on techniques that are used in gathering audit evidence and once we do the techniques, we can also introduce something referred to as types of audit evidence. Types of audit evidence. After I clear types of audit evidence, I will look on qualities of a good evidence. Qualities of a good evidence. And lastly, I'll be looking on the limitations that you can encounter whenever you are collecting audit evidence. We call that limitations in gathering audit evidence. In audit evidence gathering. So my lesson starts with a definition. If someone asks you what is evidence, the definition is very simple. Just tell the person, this one is what? Info, information. But this information here is not to be used in court. Neither is it going to be used perhaps in a particular area we have disputes. The information is used by an auditor. Remember, we are doing audit evidence, and so the information should be from the auditor himself. So we say information used by an auditor. Fair. Once you bring that clear, then you can say is the auditor is using that information to arrive at a, a conclusion in arriving at a conclusion. There. And then the last part of the definition is on whose basis, on whose basis to express 
an audit opinion. An audit opinion. Basically, what we are trying to bring here is you don't define the audit evidence unless you have these terminologies. If you have those three, then you can define that very easily. You can say information to make conclusion in order to form an opinion. And that you have a definition. Information collected by an auditor in arriving at a conclusion on whose basis the auditor expresses an audit opinion. That's another definition. That's the whole definition concerning that. If you wish, the authoritative standard is IASA number 500 that we are using. And there you can find that definition clearly explained and clearly elaborated. Now, <clears throat> having covered the definition, we can also try to bring maybe the issue of assertions and exactly relate how does the assertions maybe um, relate to with the, with the definition of the audit evidence. When we talk about evidence, sometimes we say you can define evidence as information that is used to confirm assertions. Information to confirm assertions made by the management. Assertions by management when preparing financial statement. When preparing financial statements. When a manager in a company states something, it is the work of an auditor to collect evidence and confirm that something. That statement that is made by the manager when collecting audit evidence is what we call assertion. If a manager says there is a motor vehicle in this company that does exist, then it is the work of an auditor to gather evidence to confirm that particular fact. If the auditor cannot confirm that fact, then the information cannot confirm the assertions made by the directors and therefore he has no enough evidence. So basically, the policy in collecting audit evidence requires the auditor, first of all, to identify the assertions in a particular area. Rule number one in collecting audit evidence, when we are collecting evidence, is to identify management assertions. So if you want to collect evidence on a motor vehicle, the motor vehicle is having an assertion called what? Existence. The first thing is to identify the what? The assertions on motor vehicle, which is existence. Identify the management assertions, what the management are stating concerning the financial statement. Once we identify the management assertions, then we can go ahead and do what? Check the assertions that are important or important in a particular area. We say assess the assertions for relative importance, relative importance. By here, by this word or by this phrase, I mean that if you have so many assertions, but not all of them are fitting a particular item in the financial statement, you have to assess which one fits and maybe start collecting evidence. Once you identify the management assertions and you assess those assertions, the next thing is now to Number three, to collect evidence, to collect information, that is what we are calling evidence, and what? And explanations, and explanations, that is evidence. Once you collect the evidence, the rule number four here is to tell us whether that evidence is quality or maybe also high quality. So we say, assess the evidence for sufficiency and appropriateness, assess evidence for sufficiency and appropriateness. Once we clear collecting evidence and we find that it is sufficient, then we can go ahead and form what? A conclusion. So point number five, form a conclusion on the item in the financial statement, whether it is fairly stated or whether it is free from misstatement. If now you can follow this procedure, you can collect evidence on each and every element in the financial statement. Identify the assertion, check which one are important, and then gather evidence, assess whether the evidence is sufficient and appropriate, and then lastly form a what? An audit conclusion. Having done that particular stage, it is good now we go into details by explaining the term auditing assertions. 
So the term assertion means a statement made by the directors in preparing the financial statement. So when you're saying the management asserted, it's like saying the management stated or the management said, that's what we mean by the term assertion. So the management assertions are financial representations or financial statement misrepresentation, not misrepresentation, but representations made by the management when preparing the financial statement. This, I told you, is the area to watch. And that's where we are. So whenever we are defining the term assertion in simple terms, or maybe from the dictionary point of view, the word assertion means facts or declarations made by the management in preparing the financial statement. The word financial statement assertions means management representations, management representations in including or excluding an item in the financial statement, in preparing financial statements. You can even go ahead and say, it is what the management declares. It is what the management asserts or states. That's what we call the what? The financial statement assertions. If the management states that this company has a motor vehicle, then they are stating that it is your responsibility as an auditor to confirm that motor vehicle existence. If the management, they say we had authority to acquire a loan, then the authority part becomes the assertion. If the management says that we own this motor vehicle, the ownership becomes the assertion. So basically, the financial statement assertions are classified into three categories. We have assertions about classes of transactions, assertions about classes of transactions in the financial statement. If they are preparing an income statement, then they make several assertions. When the management of an entity is preparing an income statement, they make the following assertion. Point number one, they say that those transactions that they have done what? Those transactions they have recorded there occurred. Assertion number one is called occurrence. It means the transactions took place. Transactions took place in the company. All the events did happen. Happening of an event. That is what we mean by occurrence. So when the management is preparing income statement, rule number one, they are trying to say to the auditor that those transactions did occur. Number two, they are trying to tell the auditor that and the users of the financial statement that everything recorded there is supposed to be recorded. Completeness. So completeness means what? that all transactions that should have been recorded, that should have been recorded, have been recorded, have been recorded. So everything that was supposed to be accounted for has been accounted. That's what the management is trying to tell you whenever they are preparing an income statement. Number three, they bring the word classification as part of the assertion. What the management is trying to assert is that everything has been recorded in the proper class. Recorded in the proper class of transaction. Proper class. So if you come across a particular transaction, then the management is trying to tell you that that transaction has been recorded in the proper class. Classification. By now, you know how many assertions? One, occurrence, completeness, and classification. We can also introduce other assertions, one of number four, which is going to be cutoff. Cutoff means what? It means a transaction has been recorded in the proper accounting period. Transaction has been recorded in the proper accounting period. We can also introduce another assertion, number five. And assertion number five will mean 
that everything that has been recorded has been recorded correctly. All transactions are correctly recorded. This is category A of the assertion, which is referred to as assertions about classes of transaction. Category B of transaction are known as assertions about account balances. Assertions about account balances. This is what we mean. Whenever the management is preparing a balance sheet, they are trying to create a number of assertions. One of the assertions is what? Completeness. What does completeness mean? Just like the completeness in this scenario here, which means that every...